Uh, my name is David Matlack. I'm from Google, and I'm going to be talking about exploring an architecture neutral MMU for KVM. So first, um, what do I mean by memory management in KVM? Take, stepping back to about 10,000 feet. Uh, we've got user space calling into KVM, configuring the guest address layout and how it's mapped to virtual addresses. That's basically mem slots. And then that informs how KVM sets up page tables to actually map uh, host memory into the guest. Meanwhile, you've got vCPUs running concurrently, accessing memory, faulting on memory, which has to, has to be resolved in the page tables. And then MMU notifiers coming from the host to reflect changes in the host page tables into KVM, such as uh, if a page gets swapped out, unmapping it from KVM's page table. So the thing to look at here is core to the ma managing of memory in KVM is the page table management, which is actually how the memory gets mapped into a running virtual machine, and that there's a lot of inputs to this uh, and a lot of concurrent inputs to this. So uh, the KVM MMU in cloud is a, a very critical piece of KVM, and the main important thing is the scalability of the KVM MMU. Um, in cloud, we have large VMs, with hundreds of, hundreds of vCPUs and terabytes of RAM. So within Google Cloud specifically, we've got up to 400 vCPU VMs and 12 terabytes of RAM. A uh, broad range of customers that have uh, a range of many different workloads and performance sensitivities. And live migration is a critical part of our host maintenance strategy. So VMs in cloud primarily use um, at least in Google Cloud, use direct two-dimensional paging. And what I mean by that is a second stage of paging that translates guest physical addresses to host physical addresses. So within KVM x86, we call that TDP. Um, KVM x86, we can do shadow paging, but it's only really required on ancient CPUs. Um, if you look at ARM, it's always required TDP support, which is called stage two in ARM. Uh, the one exception to this, which I'll talk a bit more about later, is nested virtualization, which does use some amount of shadow paging. Uh, so a lot of development has gone into making the TDP in KVM x86 very scalable and performant for the cloud use cases I described earlier. Um, I've got uh, some years here about you know recent developments, but a lot of these features date back to 2015, some date back to 2012 in terms of how long we've been using it within Google Cloud. Um, but in 2020, we upstreamed a, um, uh, an entirely new MMU in KVM x86 called the TDP MMU that's focused on just the TDP paging use case, so it doesn't do any shadow paging. And within this, we added support for parallel fault handling, so vCPUs could fault and populate non-present entries in the, in the page tables in parallel, um, handling uh, write protection faults for dirty logging without taking the MMU lock. This actually, this dates back to almost 2012 in the x86 shadow MMU. And then uh, support for eager page splitting, um, which is when at the beginning of dirty logging, the page tables are split um, down to 4K entries um, eagerly in the background rather than lazily at fault time. And uh, this kind of isn't the end of the road, so more development is underway. Um, we're working on NUMA aware page table allocation, uh, doing DBIT based dirty logging, so uh, not requiring any faults at all, and just letting uh, dirty bits be populated by hardware, and support for the multi generational LRU, which is a new way of doing um, access tracking um, in the core MM that requires some integration in KVM. Uh, so, as Oliver mentioned in the last talk, Google Cloud, we recently announced uh, our first ARM-based VM offering, T2A VMs, support up to 48 vCPUs, 48, 4 gigs of RAM per vCPU, based on the um, um, Ampere Ultra ARM-based processors. So we faced a lot of challenges scaling the KVM ARM MMU for these VMs. Um, Oliver talked about these in the last talk, but if you weren't here, there's inter interconnect scalability, so in the actual hardware to handle broadcast TLBIs and cache maintenance. Um, the ARM architecture requires certain PT changes 
use break before make, which makes them very expensive, um, and, and a few other issues as well. And many of the improvements to address these were ARM specific. So for example, one of them was using a local TLB flush instead of a broadcast TLB flush after resolving write protection faults. Um, but at the same time, we're still uh, adopting many of the same techniques that um, we learned on the x86 side in the TDPM MU. So for example, um, Oliver Upton from Google recently upstreamed um, or posted to the mailing list parallel fault handling that uses the same sort of um, reader writer lock and RCU techniques that the TDPM uses to parallelize page table management and then doing eager page splitting to avoid page splitting faults. So if you look at the features we've got on x86 and sort of what's upcoming, um, there's a lot of overlap between what we have on x86 and what we want to do on ARM. Um, so parallel fault handling near page splitting I already mentioned. Lockless write protection fault handling we have on x86. That's probably going to be an improvement on ARM um, that will be useful uh, next until ARM has something like PML. Same thing with dbit based dirty logging and multi-gen LRU support. And uh, if other architectures get traction in cloud and, and need to support live migration, for example, RISC-V is a new architecture that's been getting a lot of attention. Um, we expect to see a lot of the same uh, bottlenecks that require very similar software uh, solutions. So we may end up having to main end copies of these features. So is there ways we can share code instead? So the common theme among all these uh, features is it's all about page table management. Um, specific modifications to the page tables plus ways to synchronize those changes. Um, so parallel fault handling is all about how do we map guest physical addresses to a host physical address at some level in the page table hierarchy with you know, certain permissions. Um, Eager page splitting is you know, taking a range of guest memory and splitting all the huge pages down to a lower level, et cetera. OK, so to start, we can look at, well, what if we can make the TDPMMU in x86 architecture neutral and move the code from the x86 directory into uh, an architecture neutral directory? Um, and when we do this, really the only thing we need to delegate to the architecture specific code is the low-level architecture-specific details, like the layout of the page table entries and how to implement an actual TLB flush. And then once we've done this, we can expose an API for common operations, like for fault handling, mapping a guest address to a physical address at a given level, relaxing the right permi permissions for a given uh, guest address, et cetera. And then we can expose the TDPMMU iterator, which is the sort of basic data structure that all the TDPMMU page table operations are implemented with. Um, uh, we can make it available for architecture-specific page table operations. Um, so I've worked on this internally. The RFC patches will probably be posted in a couple weeks. Um, but it is possible. And um, we go from having about 2.2. 2,300 lines of code in the x86 directory to about 91% of that being able to move to the architecture neutral vert slash KVM. OK, so we can make the x86 TDPMU architecture neutral, but can it can actually support ARM? Or is it just you know a bunch of architecture neutral code that only gets used on x86? Um, so uh, x86 and ARM both use um, you know, TDP. They both use a second stage of uh, translation for VM memory. And that second stage of translation both uses a page table data structure. Uh, the page tables are page size. Page table entries are 64 bits. And a page table, each page table entry can point to a lower level page table entry, or a huge page, or page, or nothing. So it's pretty standard page table data structure. And of course, page table entries can control read, write, execute, and other attributes. Um, but there are some major differences between x86 and ARM, so I'll go through those that are relevant for doing sort of TDP paging now and sort of uh, talk about how, how um, solvable they are and what kind of changes we would need to support it. So the first up is the memory model. 
So x86 uses a total store ordering memory model, whereas ARM is weakly ordered. Um, this is very solvable. It is just a software problem. Uh, so for, for one, PT writes in the TDPM, you would need to use SMB store release instead of just write once. And there's probably some other minor changes to the sort of low level uh, concurrency code in the TDPM MU that would need to use the appropriate barriers for ARM. Um, next up, on x86, pages are always 4 kilobytes, but on ARM, um, pages can be 4 kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, or 64 kilobytes. Um, so is this solvable? Yes. Uh, so KVM ARM stage 2 page sizes always follows the host page underscore size. So the TDPM MU, instead of assuming you know, page tables are 4 kilobytes and the guest pages are 4 kilobytes, would need to use, you know, key everything off of the page size. Um, for example, when calculating how many PTEs there are per table. And when we're dealing with the different levels in the hierarchy, the TDPM MU today uses very 4K focused um, uh, pa uh, page level names like the 4K level, the 2 meg level, and the 1 gig level. So we need to abstract that out to more architecture neutral names. Okay, next is um, the root page tables can be slightly different on ARM. So x86, the root page table is always just one page, but on ARM you can actually concatenate pages together to avoid one level of lookup. So this is uh, useful for um, supporting larger physical addresses uh, instead of needing um, just one like fifth level of page tables that just uses the first you know 16 entries you could just have con 16 concatenated level 4 page tables and the, the page table walker can avoid a, a level of lookup so this would require uh, some changes to the TDPM MU um, to support uh, so the root page table allocator in the TDPM MU would have to know how to allocate contiguous page tables depending on what the, the, the VM needs. And then the iterator, the TDPM MU iterator, which is responsible for actually walking th through the page tables, would have to know about that routes could be contiguous and how to walk through the contiguous routes. I'll note that this would be required for performance parity with KVM ARM, um, but isn't required for cor correctness. So. Okay, so that the task really does work if you don't support Okay. So the the, the comment from the uh, uh, from Mark was that this is required for correctness. Okay. So next up is um, huge page splitting, uh, which Oliver talked a bit about in the last talk. So on x86, huge pages can be split in place, and what I mean by that is the huge page. PTE can be directly replaced with the PTE that points to a lower level page table that's populated with the identical mapping. But on ARM, a break before make is required to split a huge page, which means that the PTE must be uh, marked invalid first and then flushed from all CPUs that are using that PTE, and then it can be replaced with a PTE pointing to a lower level page table. The caveat here is uh, newer versions of the ARM architecture support level two break before make, which relaxes this requirement. Um, so in terms of supporting this on the TDP MMU, we could just add break before make support to the eager page splitting path um, that's keyed behind a, a static key check if, if the break is actually required. Um, or we could just require, you know, only use the TDP MMU on CPUs with break before make level two. Um, one thing I want to note about the break before make level two support is that it's not uh, um, it's not a free lunch, so it can result in TLB conflict aborts, which do require additional software to handle uh, and may be expensive to handle. So this needs to be kind of explored further. So the level two break before make I don't think is even supported on the uh, on the KVM ARM side yet. All right, some other notable differences. Um, ARM re requires break before make for other PTE changes as well, uh, but uh, I went through the TDP MMU and I don't think any are relevant to the types of PTE changes that the TDP MMU makes. Most of the time when we're modifying PTEs, we just unmap the range and let vCPUs fault it back in to pick up any changes that it needs to make. 
Um, eager page splitting is the only case where we're actually changing PTEs in place um, that require break before make in the ARM architecture. Um, ARM also requires cache maintenance operations after certain PTE changes. So we would have to audit the different um, PTE changes we were making in the TTPMU and make sure there's the appropriate hooks um, for ARM to, to actually do those cache maintenance operations. This needs to be explored further. Um, ARM does not guarantee permission faults, evict, or avoid creating TLB entries. So on x86 side, anytime you get, you know, so if we're on Intel, for example, if you get an EPT violation, you're guaranteed that that, um, that no entry in the, that if an entry in the TLB caused that fault, it's been evicted. So you don't actually have to do a manual flush. You can just repair the, TL, the PTE and resume the VM. But on the ARM side, there's some cases, like so for example, taking a write protection fault uh, during dirty logging, you actually have to do a TLB flush. So we'd have to make sure we do that for the TTPMU. And uh, the last is contiguous PTEs. So ARM allows um, creating essentially intermediate huge page sizes where um, you know, like up to 16 contiguous PTEs can combi be combined together to create one um, huge page, um, kind of an intermediate huge page. So Linux supports contiguous PTEs in the core MM, but KVM ARM doesn't use contiguous PTEs for stage two today. Um, so for parity, um, this isn't any, no contiguous PTE supports needed to support KVM ARM um, in the TDP MMU, but uh, this might need to be revisited in the future. So if 16 kilobyte granules or 64 kilobyte granules gain traction for cloud and virtualization, then um, contiguous PTEs become very useful because they provide much more um, uh, useful huge page sizes. Um, it's like two meg and, and one gig huge pages. So th that might be a point where we have to actually um, support contiguous PTEs. OK, the next thing I want to bring up is PKVM. So this isn't an architectural difference now, but just in terms of software integration, if we actually had this architecture neutral MMU. So the TDPMU, as I've described it, is not compatible with PKVM today. The reason being that the TDPMU calls out into Linux to use RCU, uh, do rescheduling, do locking, allocate memory, um, but PKVM does the stage two page table management um, outside of KVM in the, the, this thing called the hype, which runs in a, a separate exception level, and doesn't have access to call into um, Linux routines. So we wouldn't be able to just sort of build the TDPMU into PKVM into the hype and use it there. Um, but that's not to say that the TDPMU couldn't evolve to support PKVM. We could do the same sort of refactor that was done on the KVM ARM side to split out the pure page table manipulation code from the higher level operations, like the locking and allocation. Um, RCU is a little bit trickier to support. So RCU is used in the TDPMMU for page table freeing. Um, but it's possible to, to come up with a, a solution that doesn't actually depend on RCU to make it work. Um, and this could be an opportunity to deploy PKVM, uh, a PKVM-like solution to other architectures in a common way. Um, because you know the, the same sort of idea of pulling the the TDP or the stage two page table management out of KVM and making guest memory inaccessible to um, KVM and Linux um, could be done you know on x86 as well. Alternatively, PKVM could continue using the KVM ARM stage two code. Um, Android and cloud are very different use cases, uh, but this would be an increase to test and maintenance complexity. Uh, to be managing uh, two different, you know, stage two page table managers. All right, so nested virtualization, as I mentioned earlier, um, it uses shadow paging. So the TDPMU does not do shadow paging. Um, so on the x86 side, we have our sort of legacy MMU that did support shadow paging. That's what we use for nested. Um, so if we adopted the TDP MMU, KVM ARM would need to do the same, you know, implement a separate shadow paging um, infrastructure. Uh, could we do architecture neutral shadow paging for nested virtualization? That would be pretty difficult because 
Um, shadowing, doing shadow paging is inherently very architecture specific because you're shadowing whatever the guest is doing and the guest could be using any architectural feature whereas in you know everything I've been talking about this talk you know we can pick and choose what features we want to use within KVM. Um, that being said, para virtualization could be a path towards an architecture neutral nested support, so some sort of paravert interface for doing uh, nested virtualization. Um, we could build into that some sort of architecture neutral memory management for L2 VMs. Um, but I do want to note that the TTPMU does interoperate with shadow paging. So it's possible to use, you know, this is what we do on x86. We use the TTPMU whenever we're running the L1. Um, and then whenever L2 is running, it uses the shadow paging code. And so there's some interoperation between those two because, for example, when we're running an L1, we want to write protect the, you know, the, the hypervisor's e page tables. All right, so in conclusion, um, about 90% of the existing TDPMU can be made architecture neutral. Um, using the TDPMU for ARM Stage 2 is feasible. Um, but will require some changes to the TDPMMU and comes with some caveats. So as I mentioned, PKVM would not be supported initially and CPUs with the break before make less than two would, you know, we'd either not support them or would have to add break before make support, um, which honestly wouldn't be too bad. It's just a com code complexity trade-off. So I'll be sharing the RFC patches to uh, refactor the TDPMMU out um, pretty soon, probably within the next month. Um, and so I'd be um, uh, curious to hear if any other architectures would be interested in this and um, you know, if what other changes would be needed. And then also on the ARM side with the PKVM, um, uh, in that ca caveat there, what we can do or if it, you know, what, what the feedback on that is. So that's all I had. Um, so yeah, any questions? I think there's a mic, so we'll pass that around. Thank you. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, you, you mentioned uh, that CMOs were needed for PC updates. I was quite surprised because the, in the page table worker is coherent with the CPU. That, that's one of the many requirements. So I, I'm not sure what, what uh, CMOs you're referring to. Okay, yeah, this might have been just a poor misreading of the arm arm on my side. If we don't need CMOs, for page table changes, then that's no, no. We did we did CMOs for the data that is pointed to. Yeah. By the I mean basically the actual page of data. In some cases we do need CMOs. Yeah. But not for the PTEs. Not for the PTEs. Yeah. Sorry, that might have just been a typo then. We need CMOs in certain situations. Um, well, I mean, for example, if you're if the the if you're evicting a page, um, you're unmapping a page. You don't know whether the guest has mapped it. Uh, cacheable or non cacheable. Yeah. So you don't know at what level of cache the, the data is. Yeah. And if your interconnect is not <coughs> coherent with the device you, that you'll be using to swap the, the page out is not coherent either. Yeah. Uh, you need to flush that to the to the POC so that the, the page can be you know, truly be reused, swapped out or whatever. Right. But that's that concerns the data, not the PTs. Okay, yeah. I have this basically the same question, um, sure. but on the other comment about maintaining PKVM separately, I strongly recommend not doing that. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's a quick question. Um, does the TDP MMU place any restrictions on the input address size and the output address size uh, for the page tables? Like, does, does it require it to be the same as the the host kernel stage one, for example? Offhand, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I I'm not aware of any. Because it was just it was one, you know, you listed things like page sizes and stuff, but we, we allow the IPA size to be specified for the guest, so we would still need that flexibility with with the TDP MMU if we were yeah, to. Okay. That's kind of code. Okay. Cool. Any more questions, Carlos? So for, for the PK, PKVM thing, 
would it make sense to have an architecture neutral kind of dumped down PDPMMU that you could also use on x86 just for testing so that at least it doesn't break? So we have two MMUs, but at least they are all architecture neutral and uh, be better than uh, having like reuse the same hook, just have two different common scores, like to do with like a uh, 3 RCU and the uh, tiny RCU. Maybe that could be a way to get it done for PKVM as well. I mean, it would be nice if we could fit them together. Perhaps if we could, you know, instantiate a PDP MMU and you could pass some flags to say whether or not you can use these features and you get, you know, a different flavor. I think w one of the things that PKVM uses quite heavily, which I think normal KVM does not, is that we use this the, the page table as a, a source of tracking page ownership. So we, we have a lot of invalid PTEs encoding lots of data and they might become valid and we have to use software bits to track transitions between pages. Um, so we would need, you know, some things to be able to uh, get at those bits as well. So you own the PTEs anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the way I've been thinking about it is the architecture code would own the PTEs, as Paolo said. So when you're instantiating like a new mapping, um, the architecture code would construct the entire PTE to, to, to put in whatever it wants. The TDPMU, all it would do is, is take care of doing the walk down to the right t table and sort of allocating along the way and then making sure that the, um, like when you actually want to do the PTE modification, it's done in a way, like it uses the compare exchange and it, it does the appropriate locking and everything. Uh, Chris? Um, have you looked at whether this is beneficial or, or worse even for things like TDX or ACD? Like yeah, so for TDX, um, the direction they're going is to keep using the TDP MMU as is. Um, so they end up are managing, there's, there's two ma parallel tables. KVM manages the TDP pages like it does today, but anytime it updates a PTE, it does the scene call into the TDX module to update the actual page tables that are used. So the changes to the TDPMU are pretty minor. Um, for SEV, I don't believe there's there's much changes needed in the actual TDPMU, Paolo, do you know? I think not because it's called SEV. Yeah. Um, yeah, but actually, the, the TDX approach is kind of interesting. I, I was curious if uh, something like that could work for PKVM or, um, but the, it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a hand up in the back uh, before that question. Is that person still here? Okay. One last question. One very last question from the bench because we have a closer. <laughs> I think I think they might have walked out after. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you.